Good morning. I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm. A Psalm of David. Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me to waters of rest. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. I'm sorry, you prepare a table for me before one's vexing me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh for days without end. Amen. Amen. You can stay here with him, but I'm going to have um, I'm gonna borrow your Bible for one of the kids. Okay. Now y'all. It's around me. Hello. Um, today we're going to be reading Exodus 20, verse 1 through 17. You ready? One, two, oh. oh. Now do it. One, two, three. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who has brought you out from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. You shall not have any other Elohim before my face. You shall not make a graving image for yourself or any likeness in the book or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I am the Elohim, and the jealous owl, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the sons on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, and showing mercies to thousands of those who love me and keep my, my, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh your Elohim in vain. For Yahweh will not leave unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But then day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. You shall not do any work. You and your son and your daughter and your male slave and your slave girl and your livestock and your stranger who is in your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all which is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. On account of this, Yahweh blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Honor your father and your mother so your days may be long on the land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not testify witness against, oh, against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male slave, or his slave girl, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hey guys. Stop doing it.
Shalom. Shalom. Greetings from New York Church. Greetings from the Apostolo Apostolistic Rock Church out of Buffalo, New York. They're in Atlanta for the feast. Greetings from CGI Houston. They are in Myrtle Beach for the feast. Greetings from Bronson James, who's at Land Between the Lakes. Greetings from Jamal Countess, who's in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. I gave you uh, paper and pen in case you need to take notes, because I don't want you to have an excuse. Oh, there is one more thing. Did we pass out everything, Heather? No. Can you just pass? I gave the ones that I was going to give. Please take care of that. We have some gifts for y'all. We, they were things that were donated to us by one of our members named June. She's right there. She's very shy, though. I thought it would be interesting reading. If you will turn around, you'll be able to see what I'm giving Mr. Curtis. I told him I was bringing him something every day, but when I was looking at it, I just decided I wasn't going to do it every day. I was just going to do it once. Did everybody get something to write with? Do we still have any tablets left? Yeah. How many are we? How many do we lack? You got that, Catherine? Junish, can I have a water, please? Oh, I'm not going to keep y'all all day today. Huh? I know y'all want to get to playing games and stuff. So uh, we're going to get all of our stuff settled down, and we're going to be ready to go. Heather, let's, let's get that done. June, can you go take Ray's bags to him real quick for me? I know they're heavy. You'll be able to handle it. You're a strong woman. We don't have nothing less in our church. Mr. Curtis, you and June share an affinity for what is it called? Conspiracy theories. She has a bunch of books and a lot of them are hard to find and I thought you would be the perfect person for that. I gave, I gave uh, uh, Mrs. Curtis hers, I gave Ruby hers, and I gave uh, Raina hers. Y'all think they're my favorite people. They're your favorite people too. Don't worry about it. Thank you. I have the King James Version of the Bible. I usually don't use it. 
we, I don't use it at church. What you guys, uh, we decided, when I say we, it's not a democracy at our church. So when I say we, I'm usually talking about me. Decided that we were going to have a reading of the 23rd Psalm every time we get together. So when we have services, Mama Jean reads the 23rd Psalm. She's a mother of the church. She's the senior member of the church. So she reads the 23rd Psalm. Also, because our children have got to learn all the law, all the information, if you teach them when they're children, they will grow up and become productive parts of what you're doing. So every Sabbath, our children read. But we have some children that aren't usually with our children, and so that's the thing that was going on this week. Um, they will, at some point in time, get up and do the, what is it called? The armor of God. Um, because there's six parts for them, and each one of them, well, three of them will do uh, probably two parts, because our guys are, are more used to it. But we, we do that because we want our kids to know who he is. Um, before I begin the, the hard part of the sermon, I want to give you some ground rules of things that I believe. So that you know why I say what I say and it's not complicated. Um, the first thing that I believe is that our creator is who he says he is. In Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 6, you can go through it. Um, I'm going to read that out of the King James Version because I like the way it says it better. I have the Hebraic Roots Bible also. Oh, there is one last thing. Um, Mrs. Curtis, can you come here, please? I have something for you. It is only, it's not that it's, it's not, you represent all the women that are doing all the hard work, and, and I know we, we, we do uh, one little thing, uh, but I wanted to give you something. It's not going to be, y'all going to say, oh, that's just as silly as it could be, but when I tell you that I, I actually stole it from somebody I go to church with, Come right here. I'm gonna give it to you right here. I'm gonna give it to you right here. I'd like you to have that. Can you tell them what it says? <laughs> you can. Y'all have gotten them all done, and I wanted y'all to have that. It was yours, yes. Now, around to it is something that I give, I give to the people that are in our group when they've accomplished something, when they've done something, we, we have them. I'll give you some more when we get back. <laughs> I, I, do, I do tend to take them from those who have. Turn with me real quick. Deuteronomy... Chapter 31. Oh, no, no, we were going to Hebrews. I forgot what I was doing. I hadn't started yet. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. See, now I gave you an insight on where I'm going. And I'm reading out of the King James Version only because I like this version a little bit better. Those in the Hebraic roots, what page is it on? 423. There you go. So you all know where to look. I like to make sure it's easy for our children to read along with us because I want them involved in everything we do. So if you see me going slow or you know something already that I'm going to, it's not always for the grown folks in the room. Sometimes it's for the children. And sometimes the grown folks pretend they know something that they don't know. But when I explain it to the children, the grown folks be happy too. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. How many of y'all want a good report? How many of y'all want to get a good report card? You cannot do it without faith. You cannot do it without a belief system. You, you have to develop a belief system. You cannot do it without faith. You cannot get a good report. You can do all the work, but if you have no faith, you have nothing. 
Okay? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Scientists will tell you all the time about how this or that or the other was done and everything makes sense to them scientifically until you read the Bible. And then you're faced with the challenge. Does the earth revolve around the sun? And is that how you get a complete day and a complete year? Yes? Something like that, right? I'm not a scientist. Heather is. She could tell you. It, we do something with that. It tells you that. And then when you read the book in Genesis chapter 1, the sun, moon, and stars weren't even made till the fourth day. So how did we get days one through three? You have got to believe the one who wrote and told you how he did things. That's faith. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet spoke. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How many of y'all want to get that? It's work, man. But it's good work. It's a decision-making work. You got to decide to serve God. You got to make a conscious effort to serve him. You got to de be determined that you want to be successful with him. Verse 6. Y'all got that in your Bibles? Do y'all see what it says there? Somebody tell me what it says. Say it out loud. I can't hear you. Hold it. Without faith, it's impossible to do what? Y'all want to please him, don't you? Now, what else does it say? The thing that it says when it says, he who comes to Yahweh must believe that he is, means that he is who he says he is. When I tell you my belief system, that's my belief system. If you don't start everything believing that he's capable of doing what he says he's capable of doing, you're wasting time. You shouldn't even be here. I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit today about two harvests. But the title of the message is, I forgot the title. No, I didn't. The title of the message is, Our Father is the King. Our Father is the King. Now turn to Deuteronomy. There's something else you need to know. Deuteronomy chapter 31. It's not in my notes. I just, that scripture came into my mind and I want to make sure that I get that to you before I forget. Because I have a good memory, it's just short. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. I've been told by everybody, you cannot do this, oh, you can't do this. Not at the feast. Let's read this. It says, and Moses called for Yehoshua, which is who we call Joshua. And he said to him, before the eyes of all of Israel, be strong and brave. For you shall go with this people to the land which Yahweh has sworn to their fathers to give it to them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. And Yahweh is he who is going before you, and he himself shall be with you. He shall not fail you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be afraid. And Moses wrote this Torah and delivered it to the priest, the sons of Levi, who those bearing the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and to all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them saying at the end of seven years in the appointed time, in the year of release, in the feast of Sukkot or tabernacles, when all of Israel comes in to see the face of Yahweh in the place 
which he chooses, that's where we are right now, you shall proclaim this Torah before all Israel in their ears. Now you have heard by people all how they've divided the people. First of all, black people ain't invited and white people ain't invited depending on who you listen to. Women are not invited who you listen to. Children are not invited who you listen to. The book says, assemble the people, men and women and the little ones. And by the way, your foreigner who is within your gates so that they may hear and so that they may learn and may fear Yahweh your Elohim and take heed to all the words of this Torah. And their sons who have not known shall hear and shall learn to fear Yahweh your Elohim all the days which you live on the land where you're crossing over the Jordan to possess it. Now, I told you 14, but we're just gonna stop there. Once every seven years, he wants everybody to hear this. He wants them to read and know the law. They want to know all the information. Turn over to Hosea chapter 6. I'm sorry, Hosea chapter 4. And verse 6. Y'all got that? What page is it on? I can't hear you. Seven what? 83. 783. Sounded like you said 73. I was going to say, nah, you too, you too soon there. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Wait a minute. He told us once every seven years we're supposed to let them know the law. The law that people say has been done away with, yes? But if you study that law, that law is a beautiful thing. That law is a righteous thing. You know the thing about righteousness? What was righteous yesterday will be righteous tomorrow. What was unrighteous yesterday, man writes unrighteous laws and ways and has unrighteous uh, uh, things about them, man does. But Yahweh's ways are righteous, and they're going to be righteous tomorrow. All of his ways are righteous. So if he gives you something, it's going to be good for you. People say the law is done away with. What they really mean is we don't want to keep the Sabbath. That's what they mean. We don't want to keep the holy days. We'd prefer to keep the ones we have. We'd rather keep Christmas and Easter. We'd rather keep these other things. Say this with me. You ready? My father is the king. My father is the king. Okay, now if your father is the king, you're supposed to emulate your father. You're going to go to class to be like your father. You see uh, Prince, Prince George, the little one, that's going to be the king? He's going to be the king. Everybody knows he's going to be the king. There's no doubt that he's going to be the king. Prince Charles, who's supposed to be the next one in line, he may never be king, right? He may never be king because his mama's outliving him. She's 90-something. He's 70-something. He's been waiting to be king for 50-something years. But he may never be king, but you know George is going to be king, don't you? Right? There's, there's not a doubt in your mind because of the way things are laid out. So George cannot act like anybody else, can he? Right? He can't. He can't just be anybody. Turn over to Genesis chapter 17. We're only going to read verse 1. It's not in my notes, but I know where it is. So, so people tell me I'm too old to change. You cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Can't do it. Can't be done. Y'all read this with me and, and, and pay attention because we got some senior citizens in here. The same rules apply to you as apply to them children that are on the front row. He just told you, read the law to everybody. He didn't say... Lead them out because they can't change, right? It says when Abram was 99 years old, it's on page 26, y'all. Yahweh appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. What? Be perfect? How can you be perfect? You can't be perfect. 
This man was 99 years old and he just got told to be perfect. Turn over to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. It's on page 1179. I am glad to be here. I didn't know if I was going to live or die the whole year. You never know. People think that we can plan ahead. You can't plan it. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We should say if Yahweh is willing to, and if he allows it, I'll do this. That's what the scripture says. But we say we plan in this because we put ourselves in the positions of God. Right? I'm glad to be here. I thank him for being here. What an awesome opportunity it is. You have been handpicked, everybody in this room, handpicked. And some people who aren't in this room who have been handpicked have pushed away that blessing because they don't see it as a blessing. The job that we have is a great job. Let me tell you something. The gifts that are going to come to us are unnumbered. I hear people, I know people that have been bullied and beat up and treated, mistreated and killed and harmed in all kinds of ways. That's going away. The people in this room have been handpicked by the creator of everything to come in and be given positions. I'm going to show you that you're not just called to be part of the kingdom. You are called to be heirs heirs that means that you inherited my mom died she left me land Yahweh is coming back and he's giving us a kingdom that we will be heirs to and we walk around with our head down and trying to hide from the world I ain't worried about the world they can't do nothing for me he said don't don't worry about those that can kill the body but can't control the soul worry about the one that can kill the body and the soul right verse 48 Yeshua came. He said, therefore, you become perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wait a minute. We're supposed to be like him. Yes? Emulate him. When, what's the queen's name? Elizabeth? Elizabeth? It's Elizabeth? She's she been around a while, right? Yes. Queen Elizabeth she got them kids learning how to be what she wants them to be. Yes? They, they can't just go do what they want to do. And every time they do that, they get on the paper and in trouble. Yes? Right? Them kids cannot act any kind of way. But they're not just put out there. Oh, you go over here and fend for yourself. They're not put out there. They're not allowed. We grab our children and we teach them and we strengthen them. We show them the righteousness of Yahweh. We show them the ways of Yahweh. There's no better way. Our father is the king. He is the ruler, the creator of all things, and he's picked you. I don't know why he picked some of y'all. <laughs> uh, you, be, you be, we kick him. Oh, I don't want what you got, God, because I don't see a benefit right now. Right? That's how we treat him. We get mad and frustrated. There's always a point in our lives, in our situations, where we could turn that and say, you know what, I better repent. I better change. I better not be how I was. And even if you bypass that control switch that's inside your body, there's another one that starts at a brand new day. What is it that I tell you? Be better tomorrow than you were today. Change what, what if you had a bad day today, don't let it happen two days in a row. And if it happened two days in a row, make tomorrow the day. Have a mind for change. Yahweh did not call stiff-necked people. Stubbornness and stiff-necked, that is something he absolutely hates. What's that scripture I've, I always look at? For the first Samuel, first Chronicles? You'll find it for me. You know which one I'm talking about. Okay. First Samuel. You are hand-picked. I'm going to show you your hand-picked. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. I'm going to go through these scriptures pretty quick. I didn't, we normally read 
like volumes when we start reading because I want to make sure you get the background and rationale for why we talk about what we're talking about. But we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. What page is that on? 369. Now, I'm breaking in midstream here on this story, but I'm breaking in midstream because it, it adds to the point that I want to make. It says, and the man of Elohim came to Eli and he said to him, so says Yahweh, did I re reveal myself plainly to the house of your father when they were in Egypt at the house of Pharaoh? even to choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be priest to me. Wait a minute. Things don't happen by accident with Yahweh? Y'all think stuff just happens to Yahweh? It doesn't, does it? He manages his business. It don't happen to him. Well, what should that tell you about us? Because the scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48 tells you to be exactly like him. Right? That's the scripture, that's what it's telling you. Be you therefore perfect, even as your father who is in heaven is perfect. He's telling you to be like him. Stop letting stuff happen to you. Things happen. Don't get me wrong. It's not what happens, it's how you act, react to what happened. How you handle what happened. Somebody come up to you and slap you, this book tells you to do one thing. We want to do something else, don't we? Get my gun. Right? That's what we say. Oh, I'm getting a, you ain't going to just hit me. I'm a child of God, but I'll lose my childhood first. Right? I'll give it away because you slapped me. You think Satan doesn't know that about you? By the way, which day does Satan take off? What's his holy day? Which day is it that he's not going to pick on you, not bother you, not try to get to you? Why do you keep letting your guard down? Why do you keep not focusing on the things that you're supposed to focus on. Satan is not going to take time out so that you can take a break, is he? Is he? You know why he's mad? Say it with me. Because my father is the king. If my father is the king, he don't want me to inherit that kingdom, does he? Right? Okay. He says, even to choose him in verse 28, out of all the tribes of Israel to be the priest to me, to go on, to go up on my altar, to cause incense to smoke, to bear an ephod before me. And did I give to your father's house all the fire offerings of the sons of Israel? Wait a minute. He chose y'all to be here. Because it doesn't just happen to him. He picks, he's picking. And he picked you. You know what the problem with us is? Some of us don't see redeeming value in us. Why would he pick me? Who am I that should be picked? That's some of us. Those are the humble ones and he loves that. But there are some who think they have no issues. Issues is wrongness in them. Sin. You know what sin is? You know, Yahweh repurposes sin. He repurposes, he's the great recycler of all things. You give him anything terrible, he'll make something out of it. You know what sin can be used for? To keep you humble. You put that sin in your mind and you remember, you are not perfect. I've made mistakes. So when you run across somebody and make a mistake with you, you forgive them. Because the scripture clearly says, blessed are the merciful. What's the other half of that? Well, you can't receive it if you ain't given it. You know that, right? Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 says, judge not that you be not judged, for with what measure you meet, you, it shall be measured to you again. Yes? Anyway, there are two harvests. Jeremiah chapter 1, real quick, before we go to the two harvests that I'm going to tell you about. Jeremiah 1. I want to share something with you that my children know. I think they know. Well, ain't none of my children in here but one, but I know she'll know. 
How, was Jeremiah an old man when Yahweh started using him, Salma? How old was he? Eight. Let's read about Jeremiah a little bit. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah. Now Hilkiah was also a priest. One of the priests who resided in Anatoth in the land of Benjamin. Um, Hilkiah, I believe, was a priest of Josiah, the king. The one that Yahweh just thought very highly of. This king was a... Now he started reigning when he was eight. Something about them eight-year-olds, right? To whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. So when he was 21 years old, Jeremiah was eight. It also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, at the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, to the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Then the word of Yahweh was to me saying, you ready for this? Y'all ready for this? I knew you before I formed you in the belly. Wait a minute, he only did that with Yeshua. No. He, he said he knew Jeremiah before he formed him in the belly. Now, here's the thing. Y'all ready for how we're going to tie this together? Do we believe him? Yes. We either believe him or we don't. Now, if he said he knew you before he formed you in the belly, and before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. What a minute? He set you apart? Huh, that's pretty awesome. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Wait a minute. Y'all remember last year, year before, uh, no, it was last year when I met Alexander. I said, this kid has got something about him. I don't know if I said it to you, but I know that about you. You can see it in some people. Yahweh has picked him. You know that he's picked him. You don't know why he picked him, because especially when y'all look at me like, why did he pick him? <laughs> right? I know that. I'm going to tell you the truth. He picks who he wants. He picks the least among you to show the mighty, I don't need you. I don't need nothing you got. Let me show you what I do with this. And if he can take something like me and turn me around, imagine what he can do with good people, right? He said, but Yahweh said to me, do not say, what's that word? Do not say I'm a what? Now, this version says, I'm a boy. Don't tell me you're a little boy. I, I ain't worried about hearing that. I'm not interested in that. Do not say that I'm a boy. He says, behold, then I said, ah, to Adonai Yahweh, behold, I do not how, know how to speak, for I'm a boy. But Yahweh said to me, do not say I'm a boy. For you shall go to all that I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says Yahweh. How amazing is that? Little kid. There are two basic types of harvest that I want to talk to you about today so you understand what your opportunities are and what the pitfalls are. The Pentecost harvest is called the harvest of first fruits. There's another name for it, Kazir. Kazir harvest. It's small, it's selective, and all who are picked are accepted. That's why you want to be part of that first fruit. It's small, it's selective, and all who are part of that harvest are accepted. There's a scripture in Revelation, I think chapter 19, or chapter 20, and verse 6. It says that all 
who are part, let's, it says blessed who are those, let's read it. Revelation chapter 20, verse six. I just butcher stuff, so I have to read it and make sure I get it right. It says, and it's on page 1555, 1555. It says, blessed and holy is the one having part in the first resurrection. The second death has no authority over these. Why are you here? Some people come here because they just want to be in service or be part of a group. This was closest to my house. But those are bad reasons. If you're trying to be part of something, you're part of something real here. There are a lot of imitations out there. There are all kinds of imitation ways of life out there. We don't have a religion. We have a way of life. If you live this the way you're supposed to, it's not a religion. It's a way of life. If you do the things you're supposed to do, it's not a religion. People look at you and say, no, nah, I know that one. I know Ray Curtis. He's not that guy. I've known him my whole life. He's always been this way because it becomes who you are, this way of life. It's not a religion. But there are people who use this as a religion. Oh, they beat you up with it about a religion. Let me tell you something. They want you to believe that God is mean. That stuff that talks about the fear of Yahweh, the fear of Yahweh should be inside your hearts and your minds. That fear should never be, I'm scared fear. That fear should be, I really don't want to let him down. I am disappointed in myself because of what I've done. Do you remember in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve uh, uh, ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or as I call it, the internet, and they realized that they were naked. We were afraid because we were naked. Why were they afraid? They hid themselves from Yahweh. Let's hide, we done messed up. It wasn't let's hide, he's gonna kill us. Let's hide, we done messed up. How did that go to he's evil and hard? Satan, right? Recognize who our father is. Our father is the king. He wants us to be successful. You know that, right? He wants us to take that crown. Now, he ain't going to die for us to take the crown. That's not his gig. He wants us to be part of his plan. He wants all of us to be successful. Not all of us are going to be successful. Look to the people around you and say, wait a minute. Somebody either next to me, in front of me, or in back of me is going to quit. Right? As long as Yeshua is with Yahweh, you better not quit. As long as he's in that place, I don't care how bad you think you are, you go to him and you apologize. You beg for forgiveness. You recognize your mistakes and your sins. You find what you've done wrong and you apologize for it. Long as he's in up before he comes back, because once he's back, you ain't getting that chance. But he handpicked you. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit more of that tomorrow. The Kazir harvest, it's spelled Q-A-T-Z-Y-R. It is small, selective, and all are accepted. That is the harvest of Pentecost, or first fruits. That's why you want to be part of that. Now let me tell you about tabernacles. It's another harvest. It's called a seif, and it's spelled A-C-I-Y-P-H, harvest. It's a tabernacle harvest. It's a general harvest. There is no selection. All are harvested. All is harvested. And then it's separated. Everything is harvested. It's time to come in. Everything comes in. You understand? But not everything's accepted. Okay? Because when he's coming back, there's going to be folks that are going to fight him, that are not going to like his way of life. It's not going to be capitalism or communism. It's going to be his way, period. The thousand years, you got to get to that thousand years. He's going to beat up this world. You think it's a game? He's coming with 
crazy upon crazy upon crazy. And if you haven't read the book, and even if you have, but you've not accepted all of his ways and all of his days, you're going to be in trouble. This way of life is a great thing. It's practice for when he comes. The one who said, on the seventh day, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. For in six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and to the eternal. He didn't say, do it later on, I'm going to change my mind. We get a few people on the planet. Right? Because it'll fit better with what you got going on over there in Rome. Right? I was talking to some friends. I have some friends. I know y'all find that hard to believe, but I have some friends. And my friends know people. They know, I don't know anybody except for a few friends, but they know people who know stuff. And there's, people think they know when the year of release is. They think they know. But the year of release has been polluted so much that they don't know when we're supposed to re announce to the people the laws of Yahweh. Oh, somebody done told me, yeah, it's 2021. Wait a minute. 2021 is a Greco-Roman calendar thing, isn't it? Gregorian calendar? Where'd that come from? Well, we decided to change everything. You remember a, uh, B.C. and A.D. and all that? You think Yahweh's using that calendar up there? He's not. The Babylonians had their own calendar, didn't they? they just came, and they even came with weird names, crazy names and all that stuff too, didn't they, right? They wanted you to believe what they wanted you to believe. Well, why is that? Do you think Satan is stupid? This is the thing that we keep. Yes, ultimately he is stupid. Do you know why? Because anybody who goes against Yahweh is stupid. Okay? That's the truth. But he's smarter than us. We walk around thinking we can make it. Some people don't open their Bible until Sabbath. Right? We got to change habits and behavior. We got to decide what we want to do. I want to be the king. I don't want to walk out and be told, nah, you ain't going to make it, Ray. I'm going to look around for Ray Curtis when he say that. Where Ray Curtis said, because I know I'm going in. I know I'm going to be doing the things. I'm working at this. This is not a hobby for me. This is a way of life for me. This ain't pretend. Is it developed? I'm on that fellowship line Bible study. Three nights a week, right? Four nights a week? Five nights a week? Six nights a week. Why? Because on the Sabbath we get together. My Bible open every day of the week. We talking all the time, aren't we, Ruby? We focused on it. Anybody's welcome to join, aren't they, Sandy? You always come in and we talk about everything. If I don't know something, what am I going to tell you? I don't know. I'm not going to make something up, am I? We're going to be honest, and after the feast, my right hand is going to take uh, the child's line and open it back up. She's working on some things, but she's going to do it in a programmed way with the parents. Make sure we have buy-in. But we're going to be on the phone line because Satan's not taking a break from your kids. Your kids need to fight back. They need to know how. They need to understand who our creator is. I can tell you they believe it. They believe it faster than we ever will. My grandson, he wanted to, he just asked me a question out the clear blue sky. How does he tell somebody, this little kid, that he's having a conversation with, that believes in evolution? He said, this kid is, is getting, in, he's going to get beat up. He don't know. How do I tell him about God? That's the question George asked me. Where do you get this from? You think I make it up? Yahweh has got a plan for everybody in this room. But you could go get on your own plan. You can say I don't want it. Let me tell you something. There ain't enough riches around the world to add up to the one gift that he has for each person in this room. Now we done gave y'all a little thing. But imagine the riches that he's got for you. There are a trillion, billion planets or solar systems or systems out there. You think he just made them for, oh, they look nice. 
right? right? He's got a plan. Yeah, he's got, this world before wasn't just what, he's got a plan. You're not being brought up to be humans on the planet. You're brought up to be gods and kings. Joint heirs with Yeshua. Whatever he gonna do, I'm gonna do. Yes? That's my big brother. Well, he's your big brother too. And some people kick that can and say, I don't want it. Why? Because we don't fit in. All right, I spent a lot of time on that and I didn't mean to. The first fruit harvest is called Kazir. We talked about that. And the Osif harvest is the tabernacle harvest. There was a fellow in the Bible. Uh, we, we'll start again, I guess. Uh, we've read the Bible three times through on our fellowship line. And each time we've done it a little bit different, right? Um, after the feast, we're going to do it again. This is when we start. After the feast, we'll do it again. Um, but I remember reading. Y'all remember when we were reading about, uh, there's a fella. His name is Jeroboam, right? And what's it, what does it say? Son of Nebat. Yahweh wants you to know who his father was. You know that scripture that says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long? Yeah. Jeroboam did not honor his father. How is it that he didn't? Because he rejected Yahweh. He only did two, two minor things. You know what they were? Huh? No. He changed the Feast of Tabernacle month and place. Yahweh had told him to meet in Jerusalem. And he set up, what's the place he set up? Samaria? Beersheba, yes. He, he done did this. And he changed the day. Now, why did he change the day? Yes, sir. Because he didn't want for Israel going back to Judah. And he felt that if the time happens, they would be, go back to God. They would be out of his kingdom and possibly killed for doing such things. Right. That's true. <laughs> That's exactly true. Why did the people buy it? See... There's, he couldn't have done that if the people would have said, no, we, are, we believe Yahweh. We're going to follow what Yahweh said. We reject what you said because it's against the laws of Yahweh. Why did the people buy it? Because they didn't want to be substituted to the kingdom of Judah. Nope. Because of the closer convenience. Convenience, yes. It was closer when you got to do the harvest and you got to have it in by the seventh month and the first day, or you got till the eighth month, you got a lot of free time to get this done. Because he done changed the date. He gave you an extra month. It wasn't his to give. If it wasn't his to give and Yahweh was that angry, I mean, he was mad. Jeroboam's family got killed, wiped out. What do you think he's going to do to people that change his Sabbath to Sunday? What kind of name do you think they're going to have? But we walk around trying to walk on. No, we don't want nobody to think that we, we disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly with that religion and that way of life. That is not who we serve. He's not with that program. His program is righteous. It does not change. Your father is the king. Don't substitute anybody else's vision. Don't change for nobody else. Don't let nobody talk you into something. How do they normally start telling us how we do? I done told y'all a thousand times. What do they tell us? You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to worry about that. Oh, them, them laws, you ain't got to worry about that. I went to Texas this summer to take my sister down there. And I have some friends. I don't know. I, I, I've been in the church. I started in Worldwide uh, in 1970 with my parents. Okay, so I was with, uh, in Europe, they were recruited from people that were in Brickett Wood. I don't, some of the old timers will know about Brickett Wood. That was a campus in, I believe, London. It was in England somewhere. Um, they had a campus in Big Sandy, Texas. And they had a campus, in, uh, Ambassador uh, College in uh, Pasadena, California. They, at some point, Worldwide Church of God, sometime, at some point in time, 
they decided that uh, they were going to tell the people the law was done away with. Now, when I went in 1976, they were trying to recruit the youths, the youths, look at me, sounding like, what's his name from this show? Youths. <laughs> they were recruiting the youth. They were trying to get the youth to do stuff, so they came up with the YOU program. You remember that? And they had all kinds of stuff. And they had, uh, I was particularly interested in the basketball stuff, and they had regionals and nationals. And I got a chance to go to the nationals in Big Sandy that year. And uh, a man named Dennis Pyle, he was a regional guy. And he took me and my friend Dennis Charnell, and my best friend's name was Jeff Blackwell. He lived at Big Sandy because his father ran the campus. But when you went there, it was beautiful. I mean, spectacular. Everything was church. I mean, they, the, the mayor of the town that was there was a member of the church. Everything ran on Worldwide Church of God time. It was fabulous. Now, I went to see things, and they, they, they've since, you know, they were, they're a different name now. I don't know, United something or, yeah, something. They decided they didn't want to keep the Sabbath and the Holy Days. Not just don't want to keep them, they didn't make it optional where you could keep them if you wanted to. They didn't want to have nothing to do with that. And they said, the law is done away with. So as I'm driving by and I see all of these beautiful buildings and I recognize this land and this property only goes up in value. And I look and they've sold it all. So I asked the fellow that was with me, I said, what happened? Well, he said, when they told these people that the law was done away with, they stopped tithing. So they lost their money, they had to sell everything. I thought that was quite funny. I said, okay. If the law is done away with, why do these people tell these other people to tithe? If the law is done away with, what is it about these marital laws that they're interested in? If the law and the ways of Yahweh are done away with, why do we keep using them for the convenience of us? The law that they want you to believe is done away with is the Sabbath and the holy days because it shows you the plan of Yahweh and it keeps you on track for what you're supposed to do. I'm interested in my friend, Yahweh. I want to be a friend with him. I don't want him to be adversary. I want him to be my everything. I want to be able to call on him. There's a scripture in 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. I done got all the way off my notes, so I'm just going to finish my own way now. Y'all going to find out. I got to, I'm not going to keep you long, but I just want to, I want to share these things with you. I stopped using the King James Version for the most part after I found something out. 1 John 3, verse 22. The Bible has no, they wrote it in the book, it's not a secret. You just got to decide to use it. That's what I had to do. I was lazy, man. I, I believed them when they was telling me, oh, just look at that scripture, or this scripture over here. You read the whole thing, you're going to find out some of them people lied to you. People tell you Paul done done away with this and, and Yeshua came and he done away with that. I'm going to show you he didn't in just a second. My father is the king. 1 John 3, verse 22. Y'all ready? Read it with me. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Why? Because? Wait a minute. There are things you can do that are pleasing before him? Outside of the commandments? You better have a desire for him that's unequaled with anything else you do. You, you know somebody that gets sick and can't get healed? I do. I know people that are near death. I want a relationship with him where I can go to him and say, listen, I want this person healed now. Father, you own everything. I want to have that open relationship where he heals that person. We don't talk about the failures and the things that don't work because we're afraid if we say it out loud that people might know that we're not perfect in everything that we do. We have got to earn that perfection. It's a walk. The scripture starts talking about Abraham when Abraham was 75 years old. He didn't get told to be perfect until he was 99. When he was 99, the scripture says, 
You know the thing about that? When you read uh, Genesis 17, Yahweh told Abraham that everybody in his house need to be circumcised. But it says, as you're reading, and it's in Genesis 17, before Yah as Yahweh was leaving, he was circumcising people. He started with himself and Ishmael. That's somebody who believed who his creator was telling him. You want to be on my team? People talk about circumcision. Can I tell you something? You know what circumcision is? You want to know the truth? Or you want me to lie to you? Y'all choose. Circumcision is a covenant that the parents make with Yahweh, that you're going to show your children his way. A child cannot make a commitment at eight days old. That circumcision is the parents saying, listen, I'm giving him to you. That's what that is. It's not the covenant. It's saying, I'm going to give him to you. I'm going to teach him what you want him to know. I'm going to show him your ways. I'm going to put him in the mindset that he's supposed to have. Not us. We forget our father is the king. We pretend like we don't know that he's the king. We don't think the king way. We think the ghetto way. Right? It's cheaper at Walmart. <laughs> you have got to desire, I mean it's got to be in your bones, who our father is. And you got to know that in your mind, in the back of your mind and in the front of your mind, in everything that you do. When you make a mistake, you got to know it. you got to go to him and say, I'm sorry. Heather has three kids. She's got one child that I could say anything to and ask her a question. Did you do this? She's never going to lie to me. Just never has. I've known her since she was a baby. She will not lie to me. You can't teach that to somebody. But that's what Yahweh wants all of his people to do. So when I see her and she's having a bad day, I cut her a little slack. I give all of her kids a hard time because I, the Yahweh says, whom I love, I chase him. Right? Now, your father is the king. I'm going to take you to a scripture that shows you something that you have that nobody else had before you. Okay? Well, when I say that, I don't mean nobody, but people did not have in a way that it's not even in my notes. For, uh, turn over to John chapter 8, verse 32. I'm going to show you that first. Because I want you to understand there's a scripture that tells you something. John 8, 32. Y'all remember Sanford and Son? Yes. Yes. It's what Esther used to tell Fred all the time. <laughs> See? I know the people in the room watch Sanford and Son when they see that. Y'all ready? John 8, 32. What's it say? Say that out loud again. Say this out loud. My father is the king. Say this again. My father is the king. If your father is the king, is that car out there too expensive for you? Maybe he don't want you to have it. Why? Is he holding me back from something that's going to be great? Let me tell you something. Just before, I want to show you something. Because I, I got to give this to you before I forget. Because I have a good memory. It's just short. Turn over to John while we're in John. To chapter 20. And I'm going to show you something that separates you from the people that were before you. Now, I want to tell you something. Lena, that's at the back of the room, pointed the scripture out last year to me. She thought I wasn't listening to her or paying attention to her, but I was. She was right. The scripture she pointed out to me was that he had given them the Holy Spirit before the day of Pentecost. She was right. And it says that. Where does it say that at? What verse? No. Oh. Let's read it. It says, and saying this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. That's what it says, yes? I didn't make that up. I, I didn't make that up. Ray, did I make that up? It says that, right? So when you get to looking at stuff and wondering about stuff, if you don't know this book, you'll believe anything because it can be made to seem a certain way, yes? But we're not going to be those people anymore. Why? And we got to invest some time with our Father, yes? We got to develop and make sure that we do our due diligence, don't we, Sam? We got to do our part. You can't just depend on your pastor to get up here and tell you something. Let me tell you something. Something happened to your pastor, where are you going next? Don't call me. I got enough issues with my own group. Okay? Y'all, Ray Curtis can get exactly one person to the kingdom. He can't even get his wife. Okay? He can show you the way, but you got to do the work. Ray Hall can't get nobody. To the, you know how bad Ray Hall, Ray came from way back there, y'all. Like, Ray was he was He was in another state back there. Yahweh grabbed him and said, come here. Let me show these people something. Let me dust you off keep you from them places that you shouldn't have been in the first place and doing the things you shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Let me clean you up. If he could do it for me, he could do it for you. Long as Yeshua is in the holy place, don't you quit. Don't you stop. If you haven't been coming to church and you've been breaking the set, don't you quit. You clean yourself up and you go apologize and come on back. Get right with Yahweh while you can. Yes? Why? Your father is a king. He wants your success. He ain't bring. He didn't call you no losers. He ain't call no quitters. Did he? All right. I didn't want y'all to read that verse. I just saw it and I wanted to remember. Uh, Melina had told me that. I want you to skip down to verse twenty-four. Y'all ready? Now, this is Yeshua had been here and they done told him. And so in verse 24, but Thomas was one of the 12 and he was called twin and he was not with them when Yeshua had came. Then the other disciples said to him, we have seen the master. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and thrust my finger into the mark and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Uh-oh. What did I tell you the first thing that we have to do? We gotta believe. But even one of the disciples did not believe, yes? One of the people that was with him did not believe, did they? Right? I'm gonna show you something, keep reading. And after eight days, the disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them and the door was locked. And Yeshua came and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Now. When it says the door was locked, what he's telling you is, them doors was closed, he walked through it. Oh, how can you not believe that? But people don't. Oh, how could he do that? People don't. You know what people said? People said that a virgin woman could not give birth to a child. And for 2,000 years, the scientific evidence backed them up. But somewhere along the way, they found out about in vitro something, right? And all of a sudden, now everything's possible. Well, man can do it, but not Yahweh. See, you talk about this virgin birth thing, but Yahweh couldn't do it. Well, he told you 2,000 years ago, you just figured it out. How far behind him are we? <laughs> right? He can do what he says he can do. But Thomas didn't believe, did he? He didn't have a clue. He was like, nah, man, let's I see his hand. And if I were to tell you that he was going to walk in here today, a lot of people don't believe. He may walk in amongst us. But we got to get our hearts right. We got to get our minds right. We got to make a commitment. When we, I told you guys this last year. You know how people have business trips and they come and they get energized and, 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 and pushed so that they can be refreshed and renewed in whatever business field they're in. This is what Yahweh has planned for us. Get ready for that millennium, yes. But also, you walk out there amongst people who desire your, you dead. 
They don't even know why. They don't mind you doing stuff until you start doing what they didn't want you to do. See, they don't mind knowing that you, as long as you doing what they're doing, they're fine. But start keeping the Sabbath. Uh-uh. No, no. What's wrong with you? We always been Sunday keepers, and they don't even go to church, right? <laughs> Am I making that up? <laughs> the highest suicide time in this country is a uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? They love them some Christmas. You take that away from, oh, we love Christmas. And five of their family members done committed suicide around that time, and they always got to have, well, we need to go visit this grave, and we need to go visit that grave. They always do that. They don't understand. That's the first thing they'll get you with. Let me tell you something else they can't stand. And see, if you are the children of Yahweh, you should recognize this. The things that the world hates, you should know this is not what we should be doing. They cannot stand it. If you say Yahshua, Oh, it means the same thing. Well, here's my question. If it means the same thing, why are you mad about me saying it? Well, the King James Version. Oh, let me tell you about the King James Version. There's a book in the Bible called James. It's not James. It's Jacob or Yaqub, to be right. But King James wanted his name in the Bible. That's how much he cares about the righteousness of the Bible. So when people tell me it's always been... Jesus, it's never been Jesus. It wasn't Jesus when they called him. But the thing is, it said, by this name and only this name and only this name and only this name. These people don't want you to use the name. Satan don't want you to use the name. He's confused you. And we go hiding again. We don't want to offend anybody. We're going to use Jesus just here. Really? I'm not. Tired. I can't play that game no more. I get confused. Y'all know I ain't got a good memory. I'm going to remember one thing. Yeshua. Yahweh. I'm going to keep it right. This book, if you get this Hebraic Roots Bible, read uh, Exodus chapter 6, 1 through 3. In it, he tells you his name, his titles and his name. He introduces himself. When Moses said, well, who should I tell these people? And he tells them, don't worry about it, I got you. Right? That's an amazing thing. But King James don't have it like that. King James got a bunch of titles. Lord is not a name. God is not a name. Those are titles. Yahweh is a name. And it's a family name. Elohim is a title. Right? Adonai, what does that mean, Adonai? Something? Say that again. I can't hear you. It's a title, what's it mean? It means who? Most high. Right? Well, the word Lord also has been used in the Bible before. It came from a word that we know as Baal. Or Baal, however you want to spell it. B-A-A-L. Right? So when we start talking about this version and that version, righteousness should stay where it's at. Yes? Okay. I got to get to where I wanted to show you. In verse 26, after eight days, the disciples were inside again. And Thomas was with them this time. And the door was closed. And Yeshua came and stood in the midst of them and said, peace to you. That probably would have scared us, right? We in here, all of a sudden, here he come. Peace to you. Oh, wait a minute. Where you come from? I ain't know he was here. Let me, let me just hug you. Then he said to Thomas. Now he singled Thomas out like I singled some of these kids out. He said, bring your finger here and see my hands. Uh-oh. Bring your hand and thrust into my side. And be not unbelieving, but believing. That's what he said, yes? And here go Thomas. What did he say? Yeah. And here it says, and Thomas answered and said to him, my master and my Elohim. And Yeshua said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, you have believed. That's what he says, right? 
Now here's where I want you to understand you are. Because y'all didn't get a chance to see him. You didn't get the chance to walk with him. You didn't get the chance to watch him heal people and feed people and take care of people and send his disciples out. You didn't have that opportunity. What's the next verse say? What's the next line say? What does it say? So when I told you belief is important, blessed are you, you didn't get to see, but you believe. You never saw, but you believe. He done told you, blessed are you. That's amazing to me, yes? Blessed are you. You are specially blessed among people. Because throughout all the world, how many people in this room? This is a small town that we're in. How many people are in this room? Yeah, I tell you what, you go down to Houston and go down to the summit, what's it called now? Lakewood Church, going to be packed. He preach a name it, claim it ministry. You name it, you claim it. Because that's his God. Right? He got 30, 40,000 people coming to his church. Oh, they donate a lot of money. Right? There's another title that I didn't tell y'all. It's in Isaiah. It's, he read it yesterday. There's another version of that title, Babylonian. God, G-A-W-D. It means the deity of finance, the God of money. So the one that we read in God we trust, that's where that came from. He says, then truly y'all, Yahshua did many other miracles in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written that you may believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the son of Yahweh, and that believing you may have eternal life in his name. What? The first step to everything is belief. So if you don't believe anything, you're wasting your energy being here. But if you believe, I can show you the next step. Okay? Now, I believe you're here. You didn't just come because you heard the Feast of Tabernacles and you just wanted to know what that was about. And I don't think there's accidental people here. I don't think somebody just mistakenly came into the room. Right? I believe that this is something that people plan to do. Write these scriptures down because I want to give them to you. First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Leviticus. Chapter 11, verse 44 and 45. They're both going to tell you, be you holy. Even as your Father which is in heaven is holy. That's all. You're supposed to be like him. He keeps telling you that you're Father is holy. Matthew chapter 23. Verse 9. Is going to tell you. And call no one your father on this earth. One is your father. The one in heaven. He wasn't talking about daddy. He was talking about that. Father of the priesthood. They used to call them father. They, that's where the Catholics got it from. They called Elijah and Elisha father. That's what they called the priest of Yahweh. The, the man of Yahweh. The man of God. That's what they called him. They called him father. He's telling, don't call no man on earth that name. Your father is going to take care of you. Now, if that's your father, that means what? Your father is what? Your father is the king. You got to know that. You got to know that in your mind and in your heart. You got to believe that. And once you believe that, you can start to achieve things with that. Because now you're going to approach things differently. Somebody starts screaming and hollering at you, you're not going to take that and give it back to them in return, are you? Why? See, now you're starting to understand. When somebody does something to you, you're not going to return that in kind. Why? 
Say it again, because y'all sound weak with that. Did you find that scripture for me? Thank you. My left hand is handling things. 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. What's it say? Let me find What page is it on? 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. Y'all know all the commandments? You do? 1 Samuel 15. Y'all ready? For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and stubbornness is both iniquity and idolatry. Y'all think he likes those things? So why is it a proud thing of us that we're stubborn? Oh, I'm just stubborn. You gonna make it to the kingdom with that? So what should happen? We should change. We should submit to him. I'm not going to be that way anymore. Because you make a conscious effort to change. Change is not something that happens to you. Change is something you decide to do, yes? And stubbornness is both iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahweh, he has rejected you from being king. Uh-oh, what did I tell you? My father is what? But if you reject his word, you cannot be. He is not going to respect you as the king, is he? But you say to me, but I'm having such a tough time. Things are always falling apart. Thing, nothing ever goes the way that I want it to go. I'm going to show you two more things, and I'm going to be finished with y'all for today. Turn to Genesis chapter 26. I knew I didn't need to make notes because I ain't used them. This is a waste of writing. I apologize. Genesis chapter 26, verse 5. Yeshua, Yahweh, I'm sorry. Yahweh was speaking to Isaac. He was telling him how he could have the same relationship with him that Abraham had with him. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5 says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Is that what it says? Yeah. Those are five things. Obey my voice, keep my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Those are five things. You want to say, it's hard to serve Yahweh? It's not. It's five things. I'm going to obey his voice. And if he tells me something specific to do, I'm going to do it. Like he told Noah, build an ark. He even got more specific. Pitch it without and within. If he didn't do that, they would have sank to the bottom. If he did not do what he was told to do, y'all wouldn't be here. I might still be here because I'm awesome like that. <laughs> Genesis 26, 5. Y'all got that? That should be a scripture you know because that's going to tell you. Somebody comes to you, I don't know how to serve Yahweh. Let me show you five things. That's what he told Abra uh, Isaac, him and Abraham's relationship. Five things. Can you obey somebody's voice that you don't know how they sound? You can obey an adult because you know they have a sound, yes? Yes, you also can. But you have to be paying attention, don't you? Right? You can't just show up and have your headphones in and forget about the world. You got to show up and have, be plugged into Yahweh. Right? I told you I had a good memory. I was just short. Turn over to Revelation. Chapter 3. It's on page 15. 37. Why am I always getting in trouble? Why things don't work out for me? Why, oh why am I having a hard time? Oh, why is things just so bad for me? I can't win, seems like I keep getting beat up. And the scripture says, verse 19, I, 
as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. What? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Um, let me put it in language children understand. I whoop. I ain't say I whip them. I whoop them. Right? If I love you, I'm going to correct you. I'm going to show you the right way to do things. And if you don't pay attention, that's what we're going to go through probably tomorrow. If you don't pay attention, I'm going to whoop you some more. And if you still don't pay attention, I'm going to whoop you some more. I want you to not ever come to me and say, I wanted to be a son of the king, but nobody gave me the chance. Right? There's chapters in Ezekiel that talk about me being the shepherd or the Ray being the shepherd or the watchman. We're supposed to tell y'all stuff. It's not supposed to be pretty for you. It's not supposed to be easy for you. It's supposed to be learning to change and submitting to the will of Yahweh, not to Ray's will or Ray's will, but the will of Yahweh. I cannot get you where you want to go. I can show you the way. Yes? What else does it say? Be zealous then and repent. Uh-oh. Some of y'all ain't never repented in your life. You ain't never found no fault with yourself in your life. Right? Keep your finger here and turn over to the book of Jacob. Chapter 1. Uh, James, I'm sorry. Uh, James. Um, Hebrew Roots, page 1386. James chapter 1. Verse 21. Wherefore, remove. 1386. Wherefore, remove far from you all impurity and the abundance of wickedness, and with meekness receive the word that is implanted in our nature being able to save your souls. Verse 22, but become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving other people? Your own selves. Deceiving your own selves. Keep reading. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, this one is like a man studying his natural face in a mirror. For he studied himself and has gone away and immediately he forgot how he looked. We forget the wrong that we do. But we want to hold everybody else's feet to the fire, right? There's a righteousness that we're supposed to adhere to. Now, I might not be righteous all the time. Well, let me just tell you, I'm not righteous all the time. I was pretending a minute ago when I said I might not. Y'all know better. I want to be righteous all the time, right? Ray wants to be righteous all the time. We are learning to do that, just like everybody else. But most of the time, if somebody like me gets up on stage, everybody's expecting perfection. Oh, he's supposed to be perfect, and he, look what he did. Man, I done did a lot of that. Yeah, I'll be wasting energy trying to talk about me. Galatians. Keep your finger in Revelation. Five, Galatians five. I think it's Galatians five I'm looking for. No, it's not. It's not at all, I apologize, it's Philippians chapter 2. That's where I want to go. It's on page 1504. 2. I made a statement, I have to back it up with the word, so I want to make sure you get that word. That's, that's all that I'm doing here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Y'all got it? Can y'all read it so that y'all know what it says so that you know that I wasn't making that up? Say it out loud. Work out what? He said what? He didn't say I'm going to do it for you? He didn't say Ray was going to do it for you? He told you to work it out for yourself. That's the scripture that I, I say a lot of things, but the word has to back it up. 
for it to be true from him. Yes? Now, I told you that Yeshua, not never once, turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. I told you that law ain't never been done away with, ain't never been gone away with. And Yeshua backed me up, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Y'all there? Y'all there? What's it say, Thurman? <laughs> oh, he didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. Read the next verse. What's it say? For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one job or one tittle will by no means pass from the Lord till all is fulfilled. Look at that. Now, people think that he didn't know what he was talking about because he said till heaven and earth pass away. Oh, that's just how we talk. Is that how he talked? Now, because heaven and earth really going to pass away and it does have something to do with that. He knew what he was talking about. While you're still in the New Testament, people have told me oh, time and time and time again, Paul changed things. Yes? Paul decided he didn't want to keep the Sabbath and the holy days and he done did away with all this stuff. Okay? Now, turn over to Acts chapter 24. The story here is that Paul has been put in jail. Because they said he was preaching a false witness to the world and making up stuff. And he was blaspheming and all of this stuff. And he demanded that the Romans take him. And he got his, his out loud hearing. Okay? So Romans chapter 24 I'm sorry, Acts chapter 24, thank you very much. See, I told, y'all thought I was playing, didn't you? Good memory, just short. Now they have asked Paul to speak um, for himself. So let's go in verse 14 and catch it up there and see what Paul says. Uh, what's that man's name back there? Sir, do you have it? Can you read it for me? Yes, sir. Uh, Acts 24 verse 14. This is Paul talking. What? He believed what? Oh, let me give you another name for the law and the prophets. Y'all ready? The Old Testament. So Paul just said he believed everything that was written where? It's the law and the prophets. Which they could. Now, there was another thing. I'm going to read it a different way for you so you understand how you have been chastised by people that you think you care about. Paul said it, and it's in some versions this way. But this I confess to you that according to the way which they say is a cult that's how it's been described that's how it's been written that's what your family calls you that's what your friends call oh they're in a cult now the thing about the cult that we're in everything we believe is in this book show me Christmas and Easter in this book it's not in there Yahweh said he hates that can't stand it. Why are you doing that? Learn not the way of the heathen, it tells you in Jeremiah chapter 10. Okay. We're going to finish up in Revelation and finish chapter 3. I told you we were going to go to that place. John, do you remember where we were in Revelation 3? Yeah. Can you read 20 through 22 for me? Okay, it's on page 1537. Okay. Verse 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter to him. 
and I will dine with them, and he will, and he with me. If anyone hears me knocking, I'm standing at the door, I'm knocking. Listen, I want you to keep the Sabbath and the holy days. Listen, I want you to be living this way of life. Listen, don't go get no tattoos as it's written in the Bible. Wait a minute, don't do this. If you love Yahweh, you're not gonna do the things that disappoint him. Don't eat that unclean food. If you do the things that are in the rule book, if you follow the rules, you still can't get to the kingdom without Yeshua. You cannot get there without it. I'm knocking at the door, let me in, I wanna to talk to you, I wanna show you something. Our father is the king and I want you to be part of that kingdom, right? I'm knocking, you know what we say? No, man, I can't do that. My friend's gonna look at me crazy, right? I can't go with you, but I respect what you're trying to do, right? Now, when I make it to the kingdom and I'm on the other side, as a God, right? What? That's blasphemy. That's, the book tells us that. I'm going to read that tomorrow. The book tells us we're going to be joint heirs with Yeshua. What you call him? When you pray, whose name do you pray in? In Yeshua's name we pray. What? Hold on a minute. How are you going to do that on the one hand and say, no, we can't do that? You are not called to be substandard. You are called to be an heir, a joint heir with Yeshua. If you're going to be a joint heir, that means an heir. That don't mean, well, y'all over here, but he's going to be over there. Yes, there's a hierarchy. And yes, we're going to do things with him and he tells us to do. But we're going to be people in a, in a position that he's got us for. He handpicked you. Ain't nobody in this room an accident. Out of all the people in all the world, none of y'all are an accident. Your father is the king. He picked you. He picked you, Alexander. He picked you. He wants you. He's got a plan for you. Out of all the people that you know, he picked you and your sister. George is here by himself. He didn't have his sister and his brother. My two granddaughters are here, but I got 11 grandchildren. Where the rest of them at? When I tell you something, it applies to me too. I got children that are not here. My father is the king. There's a reason. He didn't call everybody. He didn't call none of Heather's family but Heather and her girl. Not sure about one of them yet. I'm thinking about it. Not you. I'm just joking. We have been given a tremendous blessing. The blessing doesn't go away just because things don't go our way today. All right, go ahead. 21. The one overcoming, I will give to him to sit with me in my throne as I also overcame and sat with my father in his throne. See? The one that's overcoming, going to get to sit with him. Hold on a minute. What does that mean? There's government seats of power. His is going to be the seat of power. When I say seat of power, imagine the White House or the Kremlin, where the decisions are made. You're going to be there with him. What do you think about this? Well, Ray, what, did you, what is your opinion? Do you think we, where do you think we should go with that? What is your opinion? How do you think we should do that? Are you talking to me? Thank you. Well, y'all remember that movie, Trading Places? Eddie Murphy? Where was that movie made at? Chicago? But it was about Chicago, right? Right. No, it was New York. In Trading Places, Eddie Murphy was the criminal at the beginning of the movie, right? They asking him questions about this other fellow that they have made into the criminal. And he's giving them advice. Nah, man, I've been there before. Don't give him this. Right? We're trading places with our former lives. We're new places, new people doing things with our father in a different way, a different mindset. There's no greater place to be, none. We're gonna to get to sit with him if we do what we're supposed to do. What's the last verse? The one who has ear, hear what the Spirit says to the congregation. 
Now, it's a hard thing to look at yourself honestly. But you cannot be successful unless you look at yourself honestly. And then change whatever needs to be changed. There's no way that I can look inside anybody that I go to church with or I'm related to and find all the things that they need to fix. That's between them and Yahweh. He will show them if they open their hearts to him. But if he opens him, his, himself to you, we have got to be the people he is calling us to be because our father is the king. He is going to determine. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to have everything. Our lives, our future, the real future, not the future. I was talking, I told you before when I came up, we don't know how long we're going to live. We don't. We don't know if we're, pro we're not promised tomorrow. So today, if we do something and tomorrow we don't live anymore, guess what? Do the best we can today. But our father is the king. And if you're called to eternal life, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. You can state plainly, tomorrow we're going to do this. Tomorrow we're going to do that. Because you now have in your possession eternal life. You have a ticket to eternal life right now. You have a ticket to the kingdom right now. You have a ticket to things that you can't even imagine right now. If, Yash if Yahshua can walk through doors, he can travel with the thought. You ain't got to get in a car. You ain't got to worry about that nice car. You just think where you're going to be and that's where you're going to be. Hey, I want to go over to Heather's house. I want to go to Ruby's house next. I'm going to go to Mama Jean's. Well, Ray, why didn't you just go to Mama Jean's when you was at Heather's? Makes more sense. No, I just needed to, Ruby needed me that, that minute. I'm going to go over to, right, that's a mindset. Yes? And we all are going to have that opportunity. But we have got to do the work. You cannot get there without doing the work. You can't get there without doing the work. And it's not a one day thing. You can't do it once a week. It's not a hobby. This is not a hobby. It's not something we do. We're not quirky. We're peculiar. He called us peculiar, by the way. Right? It's not a hobby. You can't do it sometimes. It's just a waste of energy when you do that, right? Yes? We got to do it all the time. This needs to be the focus of what we do. Yes? It's a mindset. Why? Say it again. Y'all don't believe it, I don't believe. See, I'm going to tell you my way. Y'all ready? My father's the king. Y'all believe me? Yes. You ain't got to believe me. My father's still going to be the king. Whether you believe me or not. Now, I'm going to give you a chance again. All right. We'll see. Yahweh has been good to us. Boy, he's been good to us. He's blessed us. The food has been incredible. The, the hosting and the hostesses and the people are just fantastic. I love y'all so much. There's no greater people than you. I hope to see you in the kingdom. I hope we get the job done that we're supposed to get done. Yahweh be with you and Yahweh bless you.